Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I hope you are all doing very well today. I'm here today to bring the second half of my July book haul to you and uh, I hope you're ready because I think you're going to add these um, seven or eight books to your list, I have no doubt. The first one I'm going to tell you about is the Granta Best of American um, Young American Novelist Collection. I kind of brought this up a little bit when I talked about Esme Weijun Wing's novel that I was going to take on vacation with me, which I still haven't read. But um, she was named one of the authors to watch in this collection. And there are a number of really great authors in here. Lauren Groff is in here. She wrote Fates and Furies, Monsters of Templeton, and Arcadia, which are three novels. I've read them all. They're all fantastic in their own way, very different. Anthony Mara is in here. He wrote um, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena, which is freaking fantastic if you haven't read it. Um, and he also wrote um, The Czar and Techno... I can't remember the name of his short story collection. I'm sorry. I will try to remember that sometime in this uh, video. I don't know why it's totally blanking. But I know that Olive is a huge um, proponent of that book. So I will link Olive's uh, booktube station down below so that you guys can check her out. I'm sure you do already. She's fantastic. But um, Anthony Mara is great. And it just has some short stories by Emma Klein, who wrote The Girls, which was really big um, at the beginning of the year. And just a bunch of different people. So if you're looking for a way to maybe meet some new authors, this is a little collection that can kind of just break you in, introduce you, and then you can go and get their novels or short story collections or whatever um, they have published, and it can be just kind of that neat sort of introduction. So that's the Granta Best of Young American Novelists 3 collection, um, and it is Granta's 139 publication. The next book to me was kindly sent by Little Brown over. It's an art copy of a, a novel called Little and Lion. And this is the story of a girl, I think her name is Suzette. Yeah, Suzette, who comes home to Los Angeles because her brother, who she is very close to, has been um, diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And I don't know if you know anyone with bipolar disorder, but it is definitely one of those um, conditions that people have to deal with day in and day out. And it's such a struggle. And I think that it's good that there's a book out there about someone who's come home to help their brother and acclimate him to life and get him into that situation where he feels comfortable in the world in which he lives. But <laughs> the twist, because it's not all about that, is that she falls in love with the girl that her brother is in love with. So of course there has to be a little drama, right? And so it's a little bit about doing that, trying to help her brother, trying to get him on the right path to make him um, as happy as possible, and then also sort of falling in love with this girl. So that's Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. And thank you very much, Little Brown, for sending me this. I really appreciate it. Um, so I get um, comments all the time where people ask me for books about old women and old men, because you know they're sort of my favorites. So whenever I find one, I pick it up and I have to talk to you guys about it on the channel. And this one, they may not mean to, but they do, by Kathleen Sheen. Isn't that a beautiful cover? This is the story of the Bergman family, and basically it's about the children and the fact that their mother just doesn't do what they want her to do. So her husband passes away and the children have all these plans uh, for her mom to, their mom to quietly go and live the rest of her life. And she decides, no, she's gonna live the life she's always wanted to live. Her college sweetheart comes back into the picture. She runs off. She does the things that she wants to do. And her children have to deal with the fact that she's just going to live her life. And you know I love myself a strong older woman. You know I love the fact that um, any book that talks about them just doing what they want with their lives and saying screw to you to the rest of the world i love that the children are like what what is our mom doing i think that's going to be hilarious so i picked this up if you like those type of books too um they may not mean to but they do by kathleen shin the next book i'm going to talk to you about i literally picked up just because of the cover and it's the one that got away by lee himes and look at how beautiful this little painting picture is and it's a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to read to you the back, and then you'll totally understand why I picked it up. And Lauren of Lauren in the Books, if you're watching, I think you may like this book. 
Um, meet Abby Leahy, exhausted mom, underappreciated publicist, resentful wife of an out-of-work landscaper, a woman desperate in need of a vacation from life, and who is about to get one thanks to an unexpected tumble down a Nordstrom ele escalator. Sorry, English. Difficult today. Meet Abby Von Holt, married to a handsome congressional candidate, living in a lavish penthouse, wearing ball gowns, being feted by Philadelphia society, and enjoying the kind of 14-carat lifestyle Abby Leahy has always envisioned for herself. If only she had said yes to a date with Alex Van Holt all those years ago. In the tradition of the romantic comedy Sliding Doors and Lionel Shriver's The Post-Birthday World, Lee Himes' irresistible debut novel tells the funny and touching story of an ordinary woman offered an extraordinary opportunity to reboot her life explore the road not taken, and ultimately find her true self, whoever that may be. So I thought that sounded really good. I truly think this cover is gorgeous, gorgeous. And so that's The One That Got Away by Lee Himes. The next book I'm going to tell you about, I happen to know that Simon is already hauled too, so you're getting it recommended from two different sources, and that's How to Survive a Summer, a novel by Nick White. This is the story of a man who was forced to go to a camp when he was younger to convert him from being gay back to being straight. And he returns to that camp because a movie is going to be made about a murder that occurred there, and he goes back. I don't want to know much more. I think the premise is fantastic. I think the idea of sort of this murder mystery based upon such a topical, very powerful um, thing that is going around still talked about this conversion therapy, able to um, sort of tr uh, treat the gay out of people um, is fantastic. And I love the idea. It's like this mur serial killer slash murder thrasher <laughs> backdrop as that goes around. So that's How to Survive a Summer by Nick White. And um, I have a feeling I'm going to try to get to this pretty soon because I think it sounds pretty great. The next book that I'm going to tell you about is The Changeling by Victor Lavelle. Lave. Leve. Now, I saw this on Instagram by one of my favorite authors, Taihari Jones, who I talked about her new book, um, An American Tragedy, or American Marriage. An American Marriage um, is coming out, and I have a copy of the ARC up there waiting to be read. She posted that she reads everything by this author, and his new book has come out, and we all have to read it. So, Simon, this is going to be up your alley. Jen Campbell, if you watch my channel, I have a feeling this will be up your alley, too. So I'm going to read you it, because it's a bit more complicated, and I don't want to miss anything. When Apollo... Cogwa's father disappears. All he's left his son were strange recurring dreams and a box of books stamped with the word improbabilia. Now Apollo is a father himself and his, he and his wife Emma are settling into their new lives as parents. Exhaustion and anxiety start to take their toll. Sorry, covering my face there. Apollo's old dream return and Emma begins acting odd, irritable and disconnected from their new baby boy. At first, Emma seems to be exhibiting signs of postpartum depression, but it quickly becomes clear that her troubles go even deeper. Before Apollo can do anything to help, Emma commits a horrific act beyond any parent's comprehension and vanishes seemingly into thin air. Thus begins Apollo's odyssey through a world he only thought he understood to find a wife and child who are nothing like he imagined. His quest, which begins when he meets a mysterious stranger who claims to have information about Emma's whereabouts, takes him to a forgotten island, a graveyard full of secrets, a forest where immigrant legends st still live, and finally back to a place he thought he had lost forever. This captivated retelling of a classic fairy tale imaginatively explores parental obsession, spousal love, and the secrets that make strangers out of the people we love the most. That's The Changeling by Victor Lavelle, and I think it sounds so good, and I would never have heard of it if it wasn't for Tiari Jones, so I'm really excited to get to it. It is a bit longer than I'm, uh, I wish, but I am super excited. And I know that there's Marlon James, who wrote A Brief History of Seven Killings, talks about it. Paul Beatty talks about it. Kelly Link, who is a fantastic short story writer, talks about it. And then inside, Anthony Doerr, who wrote All the Light We Cannot See, talks about it. So, come on, guys. This book has to get on your TBR as soon as possible. 
And last but not least is my Book of the Month Club book. And this is actually also was recommended to me by Charles Berry, one of the people who watches my channel. Hi, Charles. You told me about Goodbye Vitamin, a novel by Rachel Kong. And um, you know how I love the little blurbs that they put in Book of the Month. And I tell you guys about them. It says... Tender without being sentimental and hilarious without breaking a sweat. Goodbye Vitamin by Rachel Kong will charm you while stealing your heart. So I know a little bit about this. It says, freshly disengaged from her fiance and feeling that life has not turned out quite the way she planned, 30-year-old Ruth quits her job, leaves town, and arrives at her parents' home to find family life more complicated than she realized. Her father, a prominent history professor, is losing his memory. Her mother, like Ruth, is smarting from a betrayal. But over the course of a year, the comedy in Ruth's situation takes hold and gently transforms her grief. So I thought that sounded really good. I actually think the cover is kind of adorable. And then um, Charles told me to go ahead and read it. He had already had read it and really enjoyed it. So there you go. There's two recommendations, and it's a Book of the Month Club book. If you guys don't do Book of the Month, I'm not sponsored by them would love to be sponsored by them but really it's a great service where you just pay a monthly fee they give you five choices and then you get the book you can also get other books at discounted prices they're always hardbacks and they're always really inexpensive and they're always great books so that is my end of my july tbr no sorry july book haul um and i hope you guys add all of these books to your list if you've read them please let's talk about them if you're going to pick them up i can't wait to hear about it um if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much i really do appreciate it if you're new to the channel thank you i hope you like this video please subscribe and i will be talking to you guys in a few days and have a great rest of your week bye